From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, September 1st, 2022. Google launches open source bug bounty. Google launched the Open Source Software Vulnerability Rewards Program, catchy name. This will pay up to $31,337 for bugs on open source projects used by Google, things like Angular, Golang, and Fuchsia. That's not too surprising given Google uses that software. However, the bug bounty will also apply to third-party dependencies included in those code bases in an effort to improve the overall software supply chain, at least from Google's perspective. Researchers finding bugs in third-party code must first inform the maintainer of that project before reaching out to Google. The bug in the third-party dependency must be directly related to Google's use of that code to receive the bounty. Ragnar Locker claims attack on airline. The carrier TAP Air Portugal disclosed that its systems were the target of a cyber attack this week. It claimed it maintained operational integrity and found no evidence attackers accessed customer information. Its app and website were unavailable earlier this week. The Ragnar Locker ransomware group took credit for the attack. It posted a new entry on its leak site, claiming it will provide evidence that it obtained hundreds of gigabytes of data. It also posted a screenshot of a spreadsheet with what appeared to be customer information. Cloudflare won't terminate services for controversial customers. CEO and co-founder Matthew Prince said the company should not have the power to terminate security services to sites with, quote, despicable content. He compared his company to a telephone provider, not terminating service, calling such actions a dangerous precedent. Cloudflare previously cut off services to sites on two occasions. In 2017, it cut off services to the neo-Nazi site Daily Stormer. In 2019, it cut off 8chan. Prince said just because it cut off services in the past doesn't mean, quote, we were right when we did. This comes after some have called for Cloudflare to cut off services to the site Kiwi Farms after users on the site organized a swatting campaign against a transgender activist. Microsoft details TikTok account hijacking bug. Microsoft discovered the flaw in TikTok's Android app, which opened the door for a one-click account takeover using a malicious link. The vulnerability allowed for bypassing TikTok's deep link verification, forcing the app to load a URL in WebView. This would provide access to WebView's attached JavaScript bridges and grant app functionality to the attackers. This could provide attackers with access to private data or to modify profiles. Microsoft notified TikTok of the issue back in February 2022. Subsequently, they patched the issue. Microsoft does not believe attackers exploited the flaw in the wild. And now thanks to today's episode sponsor, Code42. Surprise, surprise. Five years from now, Jamie, who's resigning today, will ring the NASDAQ bell officially launching her company on the public market. And what you'll soon realize is that Jamie stole your most valuable data to start her new company. Learn how Code42 Insider can stop data theft and protect your organization's most valuable assets. Visit Code42.com slash show me to learn more. Twitter unable to deal with CSAM problem. Internal documents seen by The Verge show that Twitter considered launching an OnlyFans-style paid subscription feature for adult content earlier this year. However, when the company assembled a red team to investigate its potential, they reported in April that it couldn't safely operate such a service, as Twitter cannot accurately detect child sexual exploitation and non-consensual nudity at scale. This isn't the first time Twitter knew of its CSAM problem either. Internal documents also show that Twitter's health team issued a report back in February 2021 that its investment in technology to detect this material had not kept up with its exponential growth on the platform. Twitter's moderation tools reportedly cannot verify age of content creators or consumers and have known windows that would let illegal content through. Federal privacy law could force a low bar. Over at Protocol, Hirsch Chikara wrote up a potential problem with the current draft of the American Data Privacy and Protection Act that aims to set a national standard for privacy in the U.S. The latest draft of the legislation makes it clear that no state laws can preempt anything covered under the potential federal law. There are some explicit exemptions for state laws, things like the Biometric Information Privacy Act and California's Negligent Privacy Data Breach Law, but the bill voids any non-exempted state laws. Most importantly, it prevents any future laws that would shore up privacy at the state level. This comes as California will strengthen its existing privacy laws with the Privacy Rights Act set to go into effect in 2023. Colorado, Connecticut, Virginia, Utah, and Nevada also passed privacy legislation that would be superseded by the federal bill. 
This means that any technological innovations challenging privacy would be dependent on new federal legislation going forward. Chrome introduces a clipboard flaw. Chrome version 104 introduces a bug that removes standard users' approval to write to the clipboard on websites. Usually sites can only do so through a so-called user gesture, something like Control-C to copy. The bug potentially lets sites send text to the clipboard without that gesture. Chrome developers know of the issue, but it remains available at the time of this writing. While this potentially opens the door to malicious actors putting arbitrary content in the clipboard, Developer Jeff Johnson notes that most browsers implement poor and inadequate safeguards for the clipboard, which can often be written to with common interactions on a page. UK sets out new cybersecurity rules for telcos. The UK government set out changes to the draft of its new security framework for the telecommunications industry. These rules will go into effect in October 2022, with compliance required by March 2024. Up until now, telcos in the country set their own security standards. Under the new framework, these organizations must identify risks to any edge equipment exposed to attacks, keep controls in place for who can make network-wide changes, and make sure business processes support security. The UK's Ofcom regulator can issue fines of up to 10% of annual turnover for non-compliance. Thanks for listening to today's cybersecurity headlines. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to check out the other great podcasts from the CISO series, including Defense In-Depth. This week, the episode is entitled How to Follow Up with a CISO and helps you understand how to re-engage with a CISO in a way that's productive for both of you. Check it out over at CISOseries.com or in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.